the, one of the things I found most fascinating about your book was I didn't know that uh, electric vehicles had advanced so much in the in the 1800s. So that around 1890s, around in, in 1900, actually electric cars and internal combustion cars were competing head to head. And you even had electric taxis in New York City. You had electric de delivery vehicles way back in 1890s. What happened? How come internal combustion overtook electric vehicles and we still don't have mass-produced electric vehicles? Well, that's a great question. Actually, in the 1890s, the bicycle monopoly got together with the battery monopoly to create the electric vehicle monopoly. And then they went head to toe with the budding internal combustion machine monopoly. They joined forces in the early 1900s at a time when there were electric vehicles, electric taxis running all over the United States, in New York, in uh, Chicago, in Washington. They all got together and they jointly uh, decided to abandon their own good, clean technology, electric ve vehicles, in favor of muscle cars. Noisy, smelly, smoke, belt, uh, smoke belching, uh, gasoline burning cars, and and eventually they went head to head but, with uh, Henry Ford in 1903, who wanted to proliferate mass produced uh, gas consumption cars. But, but most, I mean, I had no idea until I read this book that we're talking about electric vehicles that had batteries and that were driving around the country. Um, and and even regenerative braking. Now, my Toyota Prius, you know, I think I have a fancy car. I tell my friends, I explain to them that when I brake, the engine's actually creating electricity. It's going into the battery. But this whole concept of regenerative braking and electric batteries and all that, a century old, more oh, than a century old. Oh, it, and it's more than that. Uh, General Electric had the, the Electrant, which was supposed to be like a parking meter. You would just park your car and you would plug in uh, when you went shopping. Uh, there were no gas stations in the early uh, 20th century. The, uh, the electric vehicles would merely go over a bay, swap out the battery in about 40 seconds instead of filling up a tank of gas. There were overnight uh, uh, electrical stalls. Actually, uh, what happened was in 1914, and this is, the, this is the swing year, after Henry Ford had won the battle against the internal combustion monopoly to sell cheap gasoline cars, he realized that he had won the battle, but he had lost the war. And he and Thomas Edison got, got together and decided to return this country to electric vehicles with an electric Model T. But through subterfuge and subversion, all these electric batteries, these wonderful light electric batteries that Edison was producing in New Jersey, by the time they got to Detroit, somehow they didn't work. But, but why, did, why did Henry Ford and Thomas Edison want to bring electric vehicles into mainstream? Why, why were they turning away? Why was Henry Ford, who had done so well with the gasoline vehicles, why did he then want to go to electric vehicles? Well, I said that he had won the battle but lost the war. Originally, Henry Ford was a populist, and he wanted internal combustion machines for everybody, the Model T. The original internal combustion and electric vehicle joint monopoly was for rich people. They were very expensive cars, so the average man was still constrained to a horse. When uh, finally Henry Ford won this war, he realized that the entire nation was being polluted, not just along the train tracks, not just al along the, uh, along the uh, chimneys, but in every barn, in every stable, in every street. And he realized that, that there was a fuel shortage even back then because fuel shortages were constantly manipulated since the days, uh, oil shortages since the days of Rockefeller. And he said, what we really need is electric cars home generated so they would run off of wind turbines now, and solar right in your own backyard not on the electric grid. So this